Right, how are we doing everybody and welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today I'm talking about basically uh, the professional golf swing. So it's a composition of all of the stuff that I've been putting onto the channel over the last, I would say, six weeks. Over the last six weeks I've talked about different parts of the golf swing into a decent amount of detail and basically what I'm today is I'm going to kind of talk very much about um, about four areas I would say of the golf swing of, of very much importance that you make sure that you adhere to. So basically it's a composition of those amounts of detail that I've been putting in down into a smaller video where I'm just going to kind of summarize over the points. The reason why it's kind of highlighted is how to swing it like a professional golfer is that's basically what we do, right? Is that professional golfers will and, and other professionals will look at professional golf swings because obviously they can hit the ball a long way, they can hit it straight, they get good strike, they hit it out the center of the face. You know, they do all these things obviously very, very well which is why they're very repeatable, you know, good performing athletes. And what we do is that we learn what these golfers do and what they have in similarities so that we can teach you guys how you can maybe debunk some of the myths that you think you should do in your golf swing, which is the whole point of this channel. The first thing to talk about is the posture. I'm not going to go into it too, too much detail. Basically, I would suggest that you create a bend first, then you flex your knees. The reason why I don't go into too much detail is because basically if you know that you have too much what's known as anterior tilt, which means too much curvature of your spine in this way, then you're generally going to be dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis. So if it's something you have on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not going to go away in your golf swing. The grip is important, okay? The grip in the lead hand, you want to grip it in the fingers, you want to get the heel pad sitting on top. Then basically from here, what would happen is that it would create a decent angle and relationship between the shaft and your lead arm which helps you do things like create wrist cock and it also helps you keep the left arm straight in the golf swing how much you rotate your forearm will depend on how many knuckles you can see which doesn't make a blind bit of difference really okay the trail arm is going to be acting as a supporting mechanism coming in towards the hit so basically we don't want the trail arm to start straightening too soon because it's going to get too flicky Okay, so therefore what we don't want to do is that when we set up, we don't want the trail hand to be sitting too much on top of the club, so it's applying pressure in a downward fashion. But also in the setup position, this is why we generally see professional golfers would have a parallel relationship of the forearms or even a bent right arm, so the right elbow is closer to the hip, because that's where it's going to be at impact. However you choose to set up, it doesn't matter, but that's how you want to try and function with that right hand, is just trying to avoid it sitting too much on top of the club. The takeaway then is, um, again, the first move, you want to create a wrist hinge, okay? That basically means that your trail hand is going to be functioning in this sort of manner at the initiation of start of the backswing, which basically means that it helps the takeaway, okay? Now, what happens if I do this movement correctly is that the club head travels through the target line, the shaft continues to point down towards my target line, which basically means that I'm on plane okay and i'm starting to create a hinge on the back of the right wrist that means that my lead wrist is now becoming flatter and as i swing up to the top of my back swing which however high i choose to swing it doesn't matter but basically you can see the way if i swing slightly higher the way there would be less of an angle on my right wrist hinge which would naturally happen so that i can keep the club on plane and if i was to swing slightly flatter this angle would arguably increase to help you swing the club on plane as well that's something that would naturally happen but you need to make sure you do it in the initiation at the start of the back swing relationship of the club face basically you want the club face parallel towards the back of the forearm if it's too vertically placed it means that it's too open and if it's too open it means that you've got something wrong in the grip or arguably in the first part of the backswing position okay so you want to make sure that when you swing up to the top doesn't matter if you swing flat or higher you want the club face to be parallel towards the back of your forearm it's okay for it to be more closed but I'm not going to start talking too much detail about flexion, which means this sort of functionality of the lead wrist in today's video, because I want to summarize over more important things so that it doesn't get too confusing. Now, what should also happen is that at the top of the backswing position, you need to make sure your weight is in your trail leg. Okay, so basically as I swing back, you can see the way that my weight for me is in my right hand side. This is an important thing because as we start to talk about the transition, what needs to happen is that the hips need to start to create an opening and it's going to be very difficult to create an opening if there's too much weight on that lead side. Okay, so that's the important thing. Now that brings us back very quickly towards the setup position. So again, if you drew a line vertically through either hip bone, you would notice the way it's in line with both of my ankles. This gives me the ability to create a rotation, but stay centered. If your stance is too narrow, then you're going to be vulnerable of creating too much lateral movement in your golf swing, which can become problematic. 
So the backswing is just a composition of making sure that you have a relationship between your club face and your lead hand. You'll naturally create the correct wrist hinge on the back of the wrist to help you keep the club on plane. And as long as you've done it in the takeaway move, and then depending on how much rotation or how your pelvis is moved in the backswing, as long as the weight is on the right hand side, then you're okay. Okay, so once you're in the backswing position, what you want to do at the start of the downswing is that basically you can see the way now my lead hip is going to start working back and out of the way. So this is going to be quite a lot of hip rotation very early at the start of the downswing. This is what's known as a separation. So from a face on perspective, you can see the way my lead hip goes back. What would happen is that naturally my left shoulder or my lead shoulder would start to work its way around and you can see the way therefore my lead arm is starting to come down. Now also the relationship that I've created at the top of my backswing position, now as I start to create this rotation you can see the way that everything is starting to drop down. So the shaft is on plane, I've retained my wrist hinge and I'm in a pretty good sort of position at the start of the downswing. Now, depending on how much rotation you can create or how much separation you can create at the start of the downswing would depend on how much of what is known as a lateral bend you can potentially create. So as I start to increase this rate of rotation of my hips very early in the downswing, you can start to see the way my right shoulder gets closer towards my right hip. My right elbow starts to get very closer towards my right hip itself very early at the start of the downswing position. Again, there may be a benefits towards this, but if you can't create that range of motion with the hips at the start of the downswing and you can't create this opening, then all you wanna make sure you do is that you wanna make sure your elbow drives towards your right hip. Because if you can create that rate of rotation of the lower body, what will start to happen, as you can see here, it will start to create a side bend, which like I mentioned, then a right lateral bend. So golfers often ask me, my head moves in front of the ball. Well, that's because you're not creating enough of this rotation, which means that you can see the way my spine now is curved in this sort of manner, which means my head can stay behind the ball. So that's why, in my opinion, it's the most important part of the golf swing is the ability to understand that at the start of the downswing, so you've got to pull the left hip back. This helps you create like an element of right lateral bend, helps this relationship come down much better. And all of a sudden you're gonna to start to look more like a professional golfer already if you can adhere to that sort of position. What's important to understand at this point is like I said, at the top of your backswing, your weight would still be on the right hand side. And as you transition, you'll still get a presence of weight on the right hand side. Problems caused because golfers tend to move this way or they start to move too much this way because it feels more powerful. The problem when you start to do this is then all of a sudden you're going to upset the sequence coming in towards the hit. So as we continue to come down, what would start to happen now is that as I come in towards the hitting area, my left shoulder would start, or my lead shoulder would start to get up and out of the way. This then creates a straightening on the left side. As I continue to do this, what you can see from the face on perspective is that as I'm staying and my lead hip is cutting back, but it's still rotating out of the way, that you can see the way I maintain an element of this sort of lateral bend here. So you can see the way my rib cage now is starting to rise up, and that's because of what was happening at the start of the downswing position. So what I mean is quite a lot of golfers at this point might start to feel like they're pulling the shoulder up, but because the pelvis starts to move forward, you won't retain this sort of spine bend position. So as long as you transition well, and then you understand your left shoulder or your lead shoulder is working back up and behind you, and then this leg starts to straighten, but you can see the way it's still on a tilt, means that I'm creating space coming in towards the hitting area, and means as I come through towards the hitting area, I can still keep the club in theory on plane, which basically means I don't want to kind of finish through the position like so, I want to make sure I can keep the shaft pointing down towards my target line as I swing through, which means I'm keeping the club on plane. What will naturally start to happen is how you hit the ball. So what happens in the golf swing is, like I said, in the transition, what would happen is that the shaft would point down on towards the plane line, and then that means that I'm retaining the angle and the wrist hinge at the point of impact, um, the point of the transition here. How we hit the golf ball is a composition of a down cocking movement, which is known as an older deviation, which is this fashion, and a rotation of the forearm. Doing both of those movements is gonna help you get the club face square at the point of impact. But as I do this, this is very much going to be a natural movement like so. But you still want to feel like the right hand or my trail hand is acting as a supporting mechanism. You don't want to be doing this because then you're going to get too flicky. So you can see from the transition area and then you're driving the elbow next to the hip if you can't do it through the rotation. And then as you continue to come in towards the hit, I think this is a movement that's going to happen pretty naturally. But you want to feel as though my trail elbow is very close towards my trail hip because it's going to help me keep the club face stable in the hitting area. 
So you want to try and hold on to this wrist hinge coming through the hit because it's going to help the club face stay very stable. And therefore you can see the way the lead arm and the shaft relationship stay much more in contact up to the point when you go through. And as long as you rotate correctly coming in towards the through swing, which means this way, as opposed to maybe standing up, then you'll notice that you're able to get significantly post impact this sort of relationship and then eventually you can choose to just roll it. You can choose to roll and release it and you can choose to finish this way where you continue the rotation or you can choose to maybe create more of an extension. It doesn't really matter to be honest with you and those are things that maybe I'll talk in more detail about. A lot of people are asking questions about what do you do if you're less flexible? Well, just as a summary today, if you're less flexible and you can't create this sort of movement, then you have to kind of feel like you're pulling the elbow down. But there are a few things basically over the next kind of few weeks that I'm going to start to talk more about in detail. And one of them is this kind of natural hitting, okay, that I've discussed today. So when I started to discuss the, this kind of um, ulnar deviation combined with a rotation, I'll start to talk about those things in more detail. But what I wanted to get across today was the message that all the detail that I've been talking about in different areas of the golf swing today, this is how it starts to come together. And I think it's really important because golfers that have been visiting for lessons and people that have been sending their swings in, you know, are able to self-diagnose much more. And I know that because they're showing me the benefits. And the reason why they're knowing that is because they know what they're looking for. So if you're videoing your golf swing, then and all of a sudden you can start to understand and relate to some of the things I've spoken about. And you video your swing and it doesn't look the same, you know what areas you need to try and improve on. So that's why I keep doing this, because it can help golfers understand and be able to self-diagnose. You know, it's always free to send the swings into the channel, like I say on every video that I do. So it's absolutely free to send the swings in. Social media links are in the description below. You've got things like where you can send the swings in and basically I'll just offer you some free little tips and advice. And generally what I do is I just point you in the direction of what video I think is gonna be best for you. And I just highlight what your problems are. So at least you're gonna go away and work on the right sort of thing. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, always appreciate a thumbs up. Drop the comments in the box below. People are generally just either, you know, taking the opportunity to just say things about their game. They're talking about things that they wanna see. The general consensus is golfers wanna see more kind of talk about if you're less flexible what to do, which I'm working on and I will work on. A lot of golfers wanna know about what's happening at the point of impact and what's going on with the shaft. And I will start to answer all those questions and I will get my head around to working on all of those things as soon as I can for you. So if you've got any other things that you wanna see on the channel, then just ask. Uh, always appreciate a thumbs up. Remember, it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button, press the little bell icon, that means you'll receive notifications every time a new video comes out, and I'll catch up with you again soon.